been talking with Paul Pot, and Paul Pot told them, this group of soldiers, that some people accused of being part of the CIA or KGB were actually innocent and only confessed because they were tortured. Some confessed to being part of the CIA before they were born. No one believes that. The defense also asked you to reconsider a document which was a 1990 speech by Stephen Heather as part of the documents they want admitted. And we have never had an objection to it. They say it shows that confessions can be relied upon. But actually, this is what Steve Heather says. He said, most of the supposed evidence of the alleged treason of those detained at S-21 in other words, the evidence, the evidence adduced by the interrogators to substantiate the allegation that those detained were agents of the CIA or the Vietnamese, in fact, demonstrates the opposite. He goes on to say that the idea that there was a pro-Vietnamese faction within the DK is a fiction that was being circulated by both the Khmer Rouge and the Vietnamese as it served both of their interests. Your Honours, why did the Khmer Rouge torture? It wasn't to get a confession to take the court, because there was no court. They were going to kill everybody anyway. Why did they torture and make such an effort to obtain these confessions? For political reasons, to try to justify the murderous regime, for exactly the same reason Munchia is presenting it now. The torture convention prevents the use of torture in a court of law for two reasons. One, it's inherently unreliable, and two, allowing torturers to use that evidence encourages torture. The Nunchia brief even relies upon the confession of Ya, though he has some detail, the Northeast Zone commander, although he acknowledges physical torture during, physical beatings during the interrogation. In the uh, document E3 slash 8374 report on his interrogation, it says that Yao was lashed with rats and swishes, switches morning and evening in accordance with the instructions from Angka. Remember, S21 was supervised by Nunchea. And not only that, it goes on to, dis to describe during that interrogation about Yah. His wife had just delivered a baby, and he was told that kind of statement to make him think about the welfare of his spouse. So who were these killings designed to protect? There was no CIA, KGB, Vietnamese infiltration into the top level of the CPK plans to kill Pol Pot. But who, why did they kill? Well, it was a very unpopular regime. It was a regime that was failing. And if we can see the next slide, this is what Nunchia told a group of Danish communists. He said the leadership apparatus must be defended at any cost. There can be no comparison between losing two or three leading cadre and two or three hundred members. Honest, who do you think Nunchia was talking about when he talked about three leading cadre? The Gang of Three, Paul Pot, himself, and Q Sampat. I'm going to skip ahead. I really want to finish and allow my colleague um, to go. Um, Your Honours, we've talked a lot about how both of the accused, Q Sampan and Nunchia, were aware of the crimes. And why is this important? Because international law says, for example, Krajishnik, trial judgment, paragraph 890, the information 
that it cues received during the period of time is important is an important element for the determination of responsibility because knowledge combined with continuing participation can be conclusive to a person's intent. As Popovich, I'll slow down. I desire to complete it. Popovich appealed judgment said, it has been established that for a conviction under JCE, you can infer a person's knowledge combined with participation, continuing participation in the crimes. And what happened when Nunchia knew of all these crimes? If we can play the next video, please. How did he react? อันนี้บางยังชาวจริงๆๆๆนั้นยังบางยังตั้งประวัตินะบางยังเงียบมารอวิญญาณมั้ยอันนี้ได้ยังสวามาช่วยทางสมดยังยังเหมือนจะจับ
And they should be held responsible for the crimes. Thank you. And and break, my colleague will have a